name is Rachel and I'm here today to talk about the best things that I read in 2018. So, I'm going to do this a little bit differently because I haven't just picked 10 or 20 books that I read this year that I enjoyed. I've kind of tried to go through my Goodreads and I've got like best books I read in 2018 but also some books that kind of affected me but they weren't my favourite but they've kind of stayed with me now. They're like uh, the things that I couldn't not mention even though they're not personally favourites. I thought I would start by going through a bit of my statistics. So I read 113 books this year, which last year my goal was 100 books and I read 99 and I kept trying to push myself and I ended up giving up on New Year's Eve because I was like, go and enjoy fucking New Year's Eve instead of trying to read one last book. It's sad. So this year, set my goal really low and read 113 books, so that's weird. It says I read 27,981 pages across those books. The smallest thing that I read was The Mark on the Wall by Virginia Woolf, and the longest book I read was Empire of Storms. And the most popular book I read was The Fault in Our Stars by John Green, and the least popular thing I read this year was this, a book from the Musée d'Orsay Museum in Paris um, about 19th century works of art. So I'm not really surprised that it was the least popular, to be honest. The only stats I'm ever going to do are the ones that Goodreads works out for me because I ain't doing maths voluntarily, that's just not my bag. I decided to kind of pick things based on categories. So this is basically like my own little award ceremony for the year. So we're going to start with my favourite poet of the year, which is Kate Tempest. So I read both of these books this year. I read this one first quite early on in the year, I think it was around February, and I loved it. I I think it might be my favourite poetry collection that I've ever read, which is Trumping Undying by Michelle Faber, which is a book that I love, 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 love. So that's some high praise. This is fantastic. It covers retellings of myths. It covers LGBT plus themes. It covers gender. It just covers so many great things. And I love Kate Tempest as a poet. And when I picked this one up, which is her new poetry collection, Running Upon the Wires, I was a little bit dubious because I have read another poetry collection by her called Let Them Eat Chaos which I read last year, didn't enjoy it all. I am going to retry it because I've had so much success with these ones but yeah, didn't love it so I wasn't sure but this one I adored. This is about a woman who has come out of a long term female female relationship and it goes from the end of that relationship and works back to the middle and then back to the beginning and you kind of see how it broke but how it was made at the same time and it's just beautiful. She is a beautiful poet and I love her so much. So she's definitely my favourite poet of the year. I will say we do not have a graphic novel category for this. I haven't read any new graphic novels that have stuck with me this year. Most graphic novels I've read have been rereads and if they've not been rereads they're not anything that I would put in a favourites category or that have affected me that much sadly. Just because I've been in a foreign country where books are really expensive so graphic novels are like breaking the bank expensive. <laughs> So yeah, haven't read that many of them. That's why we haven't got a graphic novel category, unfortunately, because I would like one. I do love graphic novels. Now I do reread a lot of books through the year and I reread favourites and I also reread books that kind of stuck with me but I didn't enjoy, which <laughs> sounds weird. Why would you go back to a book you didn't enjoy? But it is sometimes a good thing. So we have the book that I changed my mind on this year. And for that we have Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. I'm not going to say his name because it's too hard. I'm going to say Benjamin. I don't want to offend anyone and I am shit saying names. This book follows, I would say Aristotle as our main character and Dante as kind of main character but also side character to Aristotle. And it's all about him coming to terms with who he is and his relationship with Dante. I read this book, like this actual book copy, I read last year I think and I did not enjoy it. I like thought the story was cute but I had so many problems with it that I just I think I gave it like two or three stars and I was like I don't think that's a book that I'd go for again I don't think he's an author that I'd go for again however I picked this up again by listening to it on audiobook later on in the year and this I really enjoyed it I loved it I think I gave it four stars and it was fantastic and I think it's because this book is so dialogue heavy and it lacks description which when I'm reading I notice and I hate because <laughs> I'm really into writing style and description but when I listened to the audiobook I was like this makes for a really fun audiobook because there's so much dialogue and I enjoyed it so so much more. So if you're going to pick this book up I would say pick it up on audiobook because yeah I really enjoyed it when it was on audiobook so that's an award for that one. Then we have a three-way award which is a phrase I'm never going to say again and this is for books that I've reread this year. These are my three favourite 
rereads of the year that I cannot decide between. I love them all equally and I think they're all perfect and beautiful and some of my favourite books of all time. Obviously the first one is Wuthering Heights. I did a pretty long review of this earlier in the year. I loved rereading it. It's the first time I've reread it where it's not being for like studying it and I just loved it so much. It was so good. Not this copy. I didn't read this copy. <laughs> I read a Penguin English Library copy that I just destroyed with tabs. I loved rereading this. This was great. Then we have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which I reread for the first time since the first time I read it. And I first read it when I was a bit younger. So it definitely had more of an effect on me this time. And I reread this as part of like reading Jane Austen's works. And so this felt really good. I read pretty much back to back this and Sense and Sensibility. And I loved that. Like I love both of them, but this one really, really stuck out. And I noticed how similar this and Sense and Sensibility are, but how much more successful Pride and Prejudice is as a book. So that was really enjoyable and definitely one of my favourite rereads. And then the last book is a book that I reread over Christmas because I've been wanting to reread it for so long. It's one of my favourite books of all time and it is my favourite graphic novel of all time. And it is The 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg. It is so good so good. Isabel Greenberg is doing something Bronte related because she keeps writing about it on Instagram and I'm so excited for it. It literally, mm, I'm so excited. But yeah, this is a retelling of like, is it a thousand Arabian Nights? What is that book called? I cannot remember and it's really famous so that is bad. Um, I think it's a thousand Arabian Nights but also that sounds wrong. Um, it's something like that anyway where someone like tells a lot of stories and basically we follow Hero and Cherry and a man basically comes and says to Cherry's husband I bet I can sleep with your wife in a hundred days and he takes the bet and so Hero starts to tell stories to try and keep the man occupied so that he will forget day it is and so that he won't have sex with her because they are in love and so lovely and so beautiful and I love this story. It's so good. It's so good. Did I just give too much? That might have been spoiler territory. I don't think it was though. I don't think it was. I don't know. You should you should read this book anyway. So the next book I'm going to mention is a book that I read for the first time this year and it was great but it doesn't quite make it into my favourite books of 2018 so I'm mentioning it first because it was a book that stuck out but doesn't quite make it and that is a book that gave me warm fuzzy feelings that made me so so happy to be alive and to be able to read. And that is Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Culthurst. This is a, is it YA? I think it's YA fantasy book about a woman who is betrothed to someone from another kingdom to sort of unite the two kingdoms. And when she gets to this kingdom and starts meeting people, she meets his sister and falls in love with her, which is kind of drama territory. The new book of this is coming out. The last time I looked, it was February, but I think I last looked in like October, so that might be different. But but the next one of these is definitely coming out next year and I'm so excited for it. I think it's called Of Ice and Shadows or something like that. This book was cute. I loved it. I haven't ever read a book like this. I think the way that they incorporated the woman being attracted to another woman inside this story to make it a plot device of like how awkward is it that your betrothed fancies your sister. Really awkward. So I thought this was really cool and I really enjoyed it and yeah it doesn't quite make it into the favourite books but it's definitely a book that I remember like strongly that I read this year so I wanted to mention it. Next we have a book that educated me and made a big impact on my life this year and that book was Zen and the Art of Writing by Ray Bradbury. I tend to read writing books. I will read snippets of them or like read ones with like small essays and I will read them before I go into a writing session because they tend to motivate me. So I was doing that with this book and I think I read the first two essays and then I was like fuck it I can't wait day to day to read this. I'm just going to read it all in one because it is so good. This is Ray Bradbury's memoir slash 
essay collection on the craft of writing and how he writes and all that sort of stuff and it is gold it is so good he gives so many tips about writing and it's really nice to just hear someone talk about how they write I don't necessarily do all the things that he does but it's nice to experiment with them and see what works for me I find that also with Stephen King where I love reading or watching his lectures of him talking about writing but at the same time like I would never pants anything I'm a hardcore plotter yeah it's just nice to hear people talk about writing and hear about how they write without necessarily feeling like I need to do what they do if that makes sense so I don't know why I'm saying it's helpful if I'm not doing what they do but yeah he's really good at making you remember how much you are in love with writing because he is full-on in love with writing and so the way that he talks about it really makes you like oh shit yeah that's how I feel about it and then when you aren't in the mood to write you can read this and be like oh yeah, no, I, I do want to write. I really love doing that. And it kind of cracks you out of that like bad mood about it. This was great and I loved it. Next is a book that made me think and this is a book that I haven't mentioned on this channel because I read it in December but it did have an, a profound effect on me and I'm unsure whether to film a separate review talking about how I felt about it but that book is Asking For It by Louise O'Neill. This is a pretty popular book but I just haven't picked it up till this point. We follow a girl called Emma in this book who is raped at a party by multiple people and the fallout of what happens after that. The reason that this had a profound effect on me is because it intersected this sexual abuse and rape with social media and rape culture and all of those things. It did it so well. It did it in such a horrible way where you were like, oh my god, how could Louise O'Neill even write this? Like, because you feel sickened as you read it, but at the same time, you don't read it and be surprised, which is really, really sad. But you don't you don't read it and think that would never happen no one is that mean no one would ever do that because it does happen it actually happens more often than many people think this this is just a really impactful book and it's not a favorite in terms of enjoyment it's a favorite in terms of this is one of the most affecting and important books that I read this year and it is definitely going to stay with me for a very long time and it's a good book for people to read who don't necessarily have the right ideas about rape if that makes sense like the whole thing with consent and being drunk and how being drunk you can't really fully give your consent or date rape and all the things like that. It really goes into those things and it is just fantastic and a really, really, really powerful book. So yeah, there's that one. Moving from tragically sad to immensely happy and cute, we have the book that brought my fictional life and my reality together this year in such a beautiful, tied up bow kind of way. Um, and that book is Heidi by Joanna Spirey. Oh, how is it the first time I ever read this book this year? This is one of the best books of all time. This is a children's classic and I don't think I read a lot of children's classics when I was a kid. I read Alice in Wonderland, but to be honest, I was reading Lord of the Rings. <laughs> so I kind of went straight to the adult classic there. And I just, I skipped a lot of these. I didn't read like the Frances Hodgson Burnett books and things like that. It's been really nice to pick this up. And obviously I picked it up while I was living in Switzerland. I picked it up during, I think it was during the spring and it's spring a lot of this book. It's not that the people that I live with are the same as the people in this book. That's not what I'm saying. But there's this sort of atmosphere that's very Swiss in this book that is the exact atmosphere that I've encountered in Switzerland. So it was just really nice to see that put into a book that I was reading while I lived there. It was a really, really cool reading experience and it's something that I won't forget. It's one of those books where I will always associate this with a time in my life, which I don't have a lot of books that I do that with, but there are some where, you know, the minute you read the first lines, you take them back to being whatever age in whatever place. I feel like this will be that book for me. Um, and I adored it. If you don't know, this is about Heidi, who is a little girl who goes to live with her grandfather in the mountains. She goes to Dorfley, which I have been to. And yeah, then she like moves around a little bit and it's just all about her living in different areas in Switzerland and being happy and having nice friends. Basically, it's very cute. Okay, we have three more books left. So the first one is just a book that so the first one gets the award for being 
tiny but also packing the biggest punch <laughs> and that is The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. I did not see this book come in. Obviously I know that people talk about it, I know people talk about Ernest Hemingway and I know that this got a Nobel Prize for literature but even knowing all that I didn't think that I was going to adore it in the way that I did. This taught me so many lessons about writing. Like we follow a man who's basically on his own and commonly the way that authors characterise their characters is through their interactions with other people and the dialogue but when it's a man alone on a boat how do you do that? How does Hemingway do that? But he does it and he makes me care about fishing which I don't give a shit about fishing. If anything kind of don't agree with fishing as a vegetarian not a big fan of it but he makes me support the man who's trying to kill a fish which is a big achievement I think this yeah this book just it came out of nowhere and it had such a profound effect on me and I loved it so much and I definitely want to pick up some more Hemingway in the coming years now we've got number two which is my second favorite book of the year and this book gets the award for being an unexpected roller coaster the plot twists were extreme and they were not visible like I did not see that shit come in and it is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I feel like the first half of this book I kind of plodded through, didn't really know what was going on but was intrigued by the way that it was going on. <laughs> the way that the characters are constructed. There's a very, very, very weird writing style because we follow Mary Cat who is kind of all over the place uh, mentally. And yeah, we have some characters coming in who aren't very likeable and you know that, but you can't figure out why. But then I feel like I was just plodding through and kind of looking around and not seeing the massive hole in front of me and suddenly everything happened. And it's not just that a little thing happened. A little thing happened and I was like, oh my god that's really shit how are they gonna deal with this are the people gonna help them blah 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 and then a, like a bomb went off it was like fucking ridiculous I just oh my god this was intense and this was amazing and I am in love with this book it was so good yeah just just didn't see this come in did not know that this was going to surprise me so much so yeah in love with this. The last book I saved, it's my favourite book of the year. I gave it the It Blew Me Away award because I wasn't expecting it to be so good. I slept on it for a long time, like I just had it on the shelf and didn't pick it up the whole time I was in Switzerland. And if you've watched any recent reviews that I've done you probably know what book I'm going to say. But anyway, it is Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asaman. I did not think this <laughs> would be my favourite book of the year, to be honest. Even when I was making this list I didn't think this would be my favourite but it is. This book has kind of just wormed its way into my head and stayed there and I just think about it a lot. The way that it's written and the way that it handles love and togetherness and like it's really fucking weird. There's some weird shit going on but it's so weird and intense that it kind of makes it more intimate and beautiful and I'm in love with it. I'm in love with the way it talks about different countries and travel and just everything. I'm so in love with this book. I did a full review of it which I will link somewhere if you would like to watch it because I go into a lot of detail which I'm not going to go into here. This is a beautiful book. There is a reason there was so much hype around it and I don't just mean because there was a film. I know there was a film. The film is good. I think I would have liked it if I hadn't have watched it so soon after reading it and I mean the same day but this is different. Like this deserves hype out side of the fact that it's just the book that the film was adapted from because this deserves its own limelight away from that and it is fantastic. So here are the books that I decided to mention as my kind of wrap up of the year and the reasons that I liked them. Comment down below what your favourite books of the year were because I'm very interested to know. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!